Hi, Kevin Lane Keller, E.B. Osborne Professor of Marketing at the Tech School of Business at Dartmouth College. And this segment is going to talk about some financial accounting issues associated with brands. And what I'm going to do is summarize some work that I've done um, with the late, great Roger Sinclair from South Africa, who was a very talented and very sharp and astute observer of marketing and branding and the financial implications of that. So important topic. Uh, there needs to be more attention, I think, paid on this. And the couple of the papers that we put out, I think, were our attempt to at least add to that conversation. So what I want to talk about actually is something that's the, the latest kind of paper that we published in the latest topic, and it's about the Morbund effect. And that effect is all about what happens to brands when they're acquired in a mergers and acquisitions setting. So it happens all the time. Uh, many big companies acquire another company, and a lot of times they're doing that in part because of their brands that they want to have. They feel that they can create more value with them. Well, there's a couple issues on the, on the accounting side that are really important to keep track of. And one is the fact when you acquire those brands, then you have to make sure that you register their value and you register the value in terms of intangibles and customer relationships and brand components of that. But once you do that, and this is the key, that value will never increase. Now, you can say over time that it decreases and you're allowed to mark that down in terms of the accounting updates that you give and say that the value has declined. But no matter what you do and how well you market those brands, their value is never going to change on those balance sheets. So they're in effect fixed and that's where the term comes from. So the idea is that you really can't, from, from an accounting standpoint, you're not gonna be able to accrue any additional value and it makes it harder for investors to maybe appreciate how well the brands are doing or not doing. So one of the recommendations we made in this, um, in, uh, this paper was that we feel that senior management and the leaders of the company in their annual reports need to, in this section, that's the management discussion and analysis in, in, the, in the annual report, needs to reveal and share some of the performance of the brands that otherwise you would never know based on the balance sheets because nothing changes there for these acquired brands over time. And the value of a brand is in what you is what you do with it. So that's so important. Two different companies could buy the same brand and have completely different uh, results. And one of the stories I like to tell when I, I teach, I talk about Snapple. And Snapple was bought by Quaker Oats for one point seven billion dollars at one point. Three years later, sold for about three hundred million dollars, and then only about three more years later was the company that bought them called Triarch, sold them to Cadbury Schweppes, the company of which the Snapple component was estimated to be about a billion dollars. So what's Snapple worth? Is it worth 1.7? Is it worth 300 million? Or is it worth a billion? Well, it's what you can do with it. And what Quaker did was try to make Snapple maybe too much like Gatorade. And that was a mistake. There was a mis mismatch in the channels, the communications, just all different kinds of things. So Triarch figured out what the brand value was and then maximized that. So that's the kind of, in terms of acquisitions, you'd wanna be able to share those improvements that you made so that the investors have a much better understanding of, of the numbers in a particular brand performance. So main message is use those notes in the annual reports to share some of that information that otherwise investors would not necessarily get.